Hey traders, checking out of the stock market today, an initial bullish reaction to the CPI numbers led to higher opens, but the bears fairly quickly asserted themselves and then kept control for the entirety of the day from there. I'll talk about where I went right and where I went wrong. All right, so the S&P 500, we had a four hour, pretty solid bounce, oversold conditions, but we gave it all back. So pre-market, bullish reaction to CPI numbers, Big pullback, nice stair-step patterns in both directions. We had a higher low every five-minute candle on the reaction. When that pattern broke, significant pullback, lower high every five-minute candle. When that pattern broke, solid bounce, higher low every five-minute candle. When that pattern broke, that was your high of the day. So I like using these stair-step patterns, and I'll go over a trade example where I did use it today as well. So... In the morning, we had, where I went right was looking for the morning bearish entry. Why? Because a gap up open on individual names, we're not gonna be buying while we're in daily downtrends. We're looking for hourly consolidation. We knew a couple of things. Number one, if this bounce is going to see any follow through on the daily time frame, we must confirm a four hour trend change on our futures charts, which means we must form an hourly trend change on SPY and QQQ and we failed to do so. So the bears still have confidence in the short term and because of the size of the pullback, next time we bounce, we've got a lot of space to just be looking for an hourly lower high. So if we open higher tomorrow, bears are gonna be scouting hourly lower high entries as the high of today is a long ways away. We can open one and a half percent higher and still not be at the high of yes or the high of today on SPY. NASDAQ is the pretty much the same thing. Again, four hour bear break to the lower low, no follow through, but just looking for an hourly lower high to be the result of the next bounce from here. So on the morning, looking at QQQ, we knew, okay, we got a bull reaction to CPI numbers. We're going to open higher. We had a pullback here. And on that pullback, we knew to scout a higher low. How do we know to scout a higher low? Because when you see that much volatility in both directions, you look for an equilibrium and a tightening range. So we saw the bull move on the morning fairly quickly after the bell rang, then a very clear double top. And I was looking at a short and there were two ways I was going to play it. I was either going to short QQQ when we lost the higher low every two minute candle pattern. Again, stair step pattern straight into resistance. It breaks bear and we did get a new high of the day after that with zero follow through, but ideally using that stop of 347.83, the high of pre-market, which would have kept any bear in the trade. Instead of that, I chose to short NIO because I know NIO loves to break resistance with no follow through. So we broke the high of yesterday. Actually, it was the high of today that I was interested in. High of today was 2019. As soon as we broke it, I shorted because QQQ was testing its resistance and I was looking for a rejection. And then we ended up pulling back very nicely. I exited half that position right about $20. I think I got filled 2019, filled half at 20, and then sold the other half when the bulls confirmed a five minute trend change. So that was a nice short to start the day. And that's what I did right. I was looking bearish on the morning. We had clear top fishing rejections and nice pullbacks. Where I went wrong was then anticipating from there, it was almost like a checklist. Okay, we're scouting the higher low compared to pre market levels. We got it. We're scouting the lower high compared to the high pre-market. We got it. Now I'm scouting an hourly higher low on QQQ and SPY. And we didn't get it. But it was forgiving, at least initially. What do I mean by forgiving? It was a falling wedge attempting to shape up. So what that means is every time we broke to a new low of the day, we lacked follow through. And this was the falling wedge. And I was fairly confident in a bull break of this falling wedge because the most likely scenario for me was an hourly higher low. And this is a clear falling wedge, which is a bullish reversal pattern. So the way I was playing this was every time we broke a low of the day with no follow through, I bought NVDA. And we'll go through our regular rundown here in just a minute, but I would buy NVDA. So just an example, QQQ, new low of the day here at 1.35 p.m with little follow through. It lasts one five minute candle into a bounce. And again, then there was another new little low of the day there, but no follow through. 
So at 135, what is NVDA doing? Wrong time. 1235. 1235. At 1235, NVDA is holding its low of the day. So I am bottom fishing NVDA's low of the day, and my entry signal is QQQ breaking its low of the day straight into a bounce. And I did that a couple times. And so I would enter and I would sell half to give myself a very nice break even spot. And then I did it again here. I think at one, let's see, at one, we dropped to the lower low. Again on QQQ, another lower low with zero follow through. Do it again. Two, 216.95 held on NVDA. Again, not big bounces, but enough to maneuver. So we bounce off 217. We bounce up to 219, just under a 1% move. So what I'm doing is buying, selling half into the initial bounce for maybe you know, a 60 cent gain, a $1 gain to drop my break even under the lows. So I was positioning for QQQ and SPY to give us an hourly high or low, and I wanted to have a solid bull position on NVDA for when that happened. Then the red flag. So the red flag on this falling wedge was pretty much this candle right here. Because this candle did break and we started to get a little follow through, but it would still be possible to bounce from there and be all right. But that big red candle at 150 said, all right, that's a bear break of this rising wedge. That's a red flag. My plan out the window. Because we, if we're going to set an hourly high or low, that falling wedge needs to break bull. So clear red flag there. Another little red flag was this bull break failing. This was the candle here where it needed to go because we had a double top at 343.95 and 93 and you break that level, that's got to be your hourly high or low being set. And it wasn't. So what do I do? I recognize, uh-oh, bears are following through. NVDA at that point hits a new low of the day. All right, taking my loss on the NVDA bounce attempt. And then I flipped my bias to bearish. Why did I flip my bias to bearish? Because we clearly proved to me bears have complete control by breaking that falling wedge bearish. So is it too late to be looking bearish? No, I just need levels to play off of. I'm not just going to blindly buy and hope we keep dropping. I'm going to establish trade game plans as always. And we're at a point where we're not oversold on any time frame. So it's not too late to go bearish. If the hourly RSI on QQQ was 23, then I would not be looking to short short-term bounces. I would say, all right, I'll just wait for an hourly bounce. I'll scout an hourly lower high. But we weren't oversold on any time frames because we started the morning so strong on the CPI reaction. So RSI levels were not beat up. So on this bounce here, on the five minute time frame, where I started going a bit more aggressive on the bear side of things was at that. I had the falling wedge support line here. It was drawn in a way it had that level in play. Probably had it right around there. Either way, I zoom in. I say, okay, bears are in complete control. I know that a five minute lower high is the most likely scenario on this bounce. How do I know that? Because we have a long way to go to get back to previous resistance. I don't know if it's going to be a bear flag, but I know I'm scouting a five minute lower high. Okay, time to establish my trade game plan. I zoom in for more details. And at this point, I was on the one minute time frame. And I could see it was a one minute uh, stair step pattern, a bounce with a higher low every single one minute candle. We didn't change the one minute trend bullish. We didn't change the two minute trend bullish. We didn't change the five minute trend bullish. So what do I do? Okay, I'll short when we lose the pattern of a higher low every one minute candle because it'll be very low risk to be a, a stair step top fish. So as soon as we break 340.153, and I also recognize this previous support line now as resistance, which increased my confidence a bit. But as soon as we break 351, 341.53, I'm short and I put my stop over 341.70 with some wiggle room. I'm risking maybe 25 cents, 30 cents at most on that play before I would stop out. If the bulls prove it with an hourly or a one minute trend change, I stop out and the five minute bounce gets followed through. We didn't. And that was a solid win. And so the risk of 30 cents, if I'm in, let's just say I get filled at 341.50, we drop down a lot more than that. 
even just the first 10 minutes of the pullback, my reward at that point is $1.50, five times what the risk was. So it might feel like it's too late to go bearish, but again, not oversold on any time frames. And you'll often find that flags, bear flags or bull flags, form when you don't change trends on the shorter term time frames. Because again, if we had changed the one minute trend from here, the probability of a five minute bear flag then becomes a lot less likely because the bounce retracement then becomes more significant. But never change the one minute trend, five minute bear flag. There was another one. So the bounce here at the end of the day, five minute EMA 12 resistance. Honestly, I wasn't even watching that, but just looking for a 15 minute lower high to be the result of this bounce. A lot of space for it. Okay, I zoom in. I'm looking for the details of the short term trend to indicate the most likely scenario on the longer term time frame is taking place. So I was looking at a one minute head and shoulders. So on this pullback, I say, okay, that's enough pullback to scout a one minute lower high. Again, my stop is not far away because if 340, 40 breaks, I'm wrong. It's not a head and shoulders. 339.62, 339.61 was a double bottom. That level breaks, bears get follow through with another leg down. So we can zoom into the one and two minute time frame for details if we're looking for five and 15 minute lower highs. So that is how I salvaged the day a bit by being late to, to joining team bear aggressively, but recognizing I'm wrong to be looking bullish for the hourly high or low, and there's still opportunity for some wins as a bear. So where do we look from here? Solid, solid day for the bears, bearish engulfing candle on QQQ and on SPY. And again, if we open higher, bears are just looking for another hourly lower high. We have to see hourly trend changes confirmed to the bulls during regular trading hours if we're going to see any indication of a daily bounce getting some follow through. The highs of today are now key resistance levels for me because it's the high of a fundamental news reaction and they led to double tops. SPY got a bull break, but with zero follow through. So these levels are key. And how I incorporate that into my weekly analysis, I know I'm scouting weekly higher lows. There's no indication of a weekly higher low being set. But if we break the highs of today, the highs of the CPI reaction, that to me will be a significant probability increaser that our weekly higher low is set. But we're a long way away from those resistances. So it's not in play at the moment. And we got OPEX later this week with a bunch of expiration. So bears in control and comfortable as long as we're in an hourly downtrend, burden on bulls to confirm hourly trends back in their favor, have to break highs of the CPI reaction, which for many names is the high of today. If we're going to be talking about weekly higher lows potentially being set. But for now, bears keep their control. So MBDA is still bearish, but there are some key supports in play. 206 and 208 is a triple bottom. And the four-hour RSI bounced from historical lows. Didn't get much follow-through, but it is right back towards those historical lows. So the RSI right now, I always round it to 24. And again, the, the bounce zone is 18 to 21. So if we have a red day tomorrow, and if we drop down another 3%, for our RSI will be at historical bounce levels, testing these key supports. Now, obviously it's gonna be dictated by what QQQ and the broader market is doing as well, but there is a potential bottom fish play with that support. And again, just like everybody else, lots of space for an hourly lower high to be the result of the next bounce. The bulls don't prove a thing until we confirm an hourly trend change during regular trading hours. And SMH is still weak, closing down near its lows Fear low 237.32 in play. Again, this is our weakest of the weak sectors. Down testing the fear lows. And AMD, look at this line, 99 to 101. We held it five times. Now it has broken and we're at the lowest levels since July of 2021. So seven month lows. Breaking fear lows. So we have the weakest sector and AMD divided by SMH shows us that AMD is even weaker than our weakest sector. 
It's in the weakest sector, but it's it's the weakest name in the weakest sector is essentially what it boils down to for AMD right now. So we have to keep an eye on that for any kind of shift. But if it doesn't shift, again, there's plenty of space for daily lower highs. AMD can bounce 10% and bears will be looking for a daily lower high bearish entry as long as it is a lead bear. And as long as that correlation with the ETF, I can look at AMD divided by SMH, which we just did, okay? AMD is very weak. I can look at SMH divided by SPY, okay? Very weak. It's how I compare an individual sector to the whole, and it's how I compare an individual stock to the sector. NIO, so that short worked out, covered, would have been better off shorting a weaker name, but that's easy to say in hindsight. It was a solid trade. We have not confirmed an hourly trend change to the bulls, as far as I'm concerned. Very significant bounce, but it was all the same bounce into the high of this morning. Hourly high or low, lower high, and just tightening up right now. No hourly trend change confirmed to the bulls yet at this point. Tesla is remaining weak. Tesla closing near the low of the day. Failed to confirm an hourly trend change here as well. We're not going to go anywhere on a daily bounce if we don't change the hourly trend. So what did I just say about the one minute time frame and the five minute bear flag on QQQ? One minute bounce didn't change the trend. Is this a daily bear flag? If we don't change the hourly trend bullish, yes. You have to see trend changes on the shorter term time frames to negate possible bear flags on longer term time frames. And if you don't change those trends, the bear flags are absolutely on the table. So Tesla with an hourly downtrend as our guide, we are looking for the weekly higher low. We have a lot more space for it to form than many other names, but there is no indication the weekly higher low is being set yet. We do have a double bottom at 974, 976, but an hourly trend change is needed if the bulls are going to prove anything to us off of that level. XLV, daily consolidation continues. Still an uptrend. Anything above 136.45 is a daily higher low. Hourly, RSI, got oversold in extended hours. So that for me just throws the back burner out the window just because it's not ideal scenario. That just makes it too confusing for me to have any confidence in that trade. But what we're watching for from here, can we maintain the uptrend? And if the answer is yes, do we set a daily lower high as the result of the next bounce? This pullback percentage-wise is the biggest percentage pullback that we've seen recently. Currently a 3.75% pullback. Last daily consolidation was half that. The daily consolidation before that was two-thirds of that. So the bigger pullback creates the space for aggressive bears to be scouting a lower high. Keeping in mind, it is coming off the all-time highs. But just something to keep an eye on. And on that note, our grocery names, I don't know what the official name would be, but Kroger and Cost, same thing. They're, they're strong. They're coming off all-time highs. But KR has a double top at the all-time high and has pulled back more significantly on this consolidation than at any point in the last month. So again... We're looking for a daily high or low, but we can bounce 5% from here and just be looking for a daily lower high. So aggressive bears, this is how aggressive bears look to top fish. And it's waiting. It's waiting for a level to play off of. I'm not just scaling in to the, to the blue sky breakout looking for a top. I'm saying, okay, that's a big enough pullback where I'm scouting a lower high to be the result of the next bounce. And I do that on so many time frames. Sometimes I'm wrong, like on the hourly and the S&P 500 today, but most often it's right. And that's why I was looking bearish first thing, because the size of the retracement on the consolidation after the initial CPI reaction created the space for a lower high to form as a result of the next bounce. So KR and cost will be watching closely to see if we set the daily high or low, and then do we set a lower high as a result? Again, look at the risk and reward. If we bounce here and I short it at 600 and I put my stop over 612, 
I'm risking $12. It would be a swing trade attempt. I'm not looking to make these trades. Again, I'm not going to try and pick a fight with Blue Sky Bulls. But I know aggressive traders out there like these kinds of plays. Give yourself a level to play off of. And if we then were to confirm a daily downtrend into weekly consolidation, the risk of $12 then sees reward of potentially multiple times that. Same thing with TLT. I know people are looking for a TLT bounce. We do have a, a little short-term double bottom, but rather than trying to nail the bottom, we can wait for a big enough bounce to then have a level to play off of to be looking for the reversal. The moral of the video is give yourself a level to play off of. And if you feel you're late or chasing, it's not chasing if there's a level to play off of. If, the, if we just ran 5%, and I'm looking for a five minute higher low and it's set, I can now make an entry and use that five minute higher low as my stop. My risk is close by. Again, we always want to analyze what the reward is and make sure the reward is worth the risk. But if you're playing off of a level that is nearby, that risk is always manageable. XLF, daily lower high, convincingly set now. Are we going to confirm the bear flag? That's what I'm watching very closely for the next day or two. 36.98 breaking. Confirms the daily downtrend. Bulls would have to hold that level and break 38.16 to set the weekly higher low. And bears have momentum still. All about 36.98 tomorrow. IWM? IWM started real strong. And a lot of control on the morning. Look at the high of pre-market. We blew through it. 1% follow through. We took out the bearish action from the last four days, but we gave it back. Big pullback and a lot of space for an hourly lower high to be the result of this bounce. So back to square one, hourly trend change back to bulls is needed. Bears are confident as long as that is not taking place. Biotech sector, solid start to the morning. Gave it all back and dropped to the lower low. Anything under 89.91 is an hourly lower high. Hourly downtrend is our guide as the bears are back in complete short-term control. On to commodities. So didn't like the size of the pullback on gold and silver yesterday, but we did keep the four-hour uptrend. So I'll give it to you, bulls. You kept, you kept your cool and kept the uptrend going. Bullish reaction to CPI numbers. Again, bigger picture, we got to be cautious of a weekly lower high being the result of this bounce. And at this point, the retracement size is pushing 50%. So again, I'm watching for the potential of an equilibrium. We got right up to that 50% level, which means it's possible that we tighten up within this equilibrium for another month. Potentially, again, we could tighten up until the next FOMC, which is now maybe three weeks away. One, two, three. Nope. Still four weeks, I think, right? When is it? May 7th, May 8th, I thought it was. Can't be then. It's either the 4th or the 11th. Either way, it's weeks away. Silver's the same thing. Four-hour uptrend, short-term guide, cautious of a weekly lower high. We would have to lose the daily higher lows for our weekly lower high to be shaping up. We got a lot of space for a daily higher low to form. So comfy in my metals positions. And miners, got to watch this rising wedge. So I'm cautious of some of these commodities with rising wedges because we are at the highest levels in months, but we're not seeing convincing breakouts. I'm used to breakouts being strong and getting follow through. And we're not seeing it, but we are still in daily uptrends. So I'm watching this for the miners. I'm watching this for CCJ. Again, CCJ, higher low and higher high today. Bulls are keeping short-term control. It's just we got to just keep an eye on this just to be cautious. But plenty of space for a daily higher low on CCJ next time we pull back. If hourly oversold conditions were to align with this uptrend line, I might be interested in that bounce. But one positive for the bulls with setups like this on the daily chart is BTU. So why is this a positive? Because again, rising wedges can break bull. And here's an example where, you know, I could draw the trend line to still just keep it in play, but it's a very convincing candle today. 
Strong close, uptick in bull volume. We're up at the high. So CCJ and gold miners, metal miners, are looking at BTU and saying, well, I hope we put up a day like that soon for some conviction on this continuation breakout. So again, I'm bullish CCJ. I'm bullish the metals and miners as long as we are in daily uptrends. But I put on my bear glasses and say, I just need to keep an eye on this so I don't get blindsided if we were to see weakness. Oil, four hour. This is the pattern we were watching. We broke it bull. We have not confirmed the four hour trend change yet. So the bulls have to pull that off. But we double bottomed at 92.20 support, trying to shape up the weekly higher low. And if we get it, the most important resistance is then 116.64 for the potential we remain within a tightening range here as well. So bulls do still need to confirm a four hour trend change to be shaping up that weekly higher low. But a solid bounce, very quick, 8% or so. So hourly downtrend is our guide. If we open higher tomorrow, we scout hourly lower highs. We are not at extremes on any RSI levels as far as the broader market futures chart is concerned. The hourly is not oversold. The four hour is not oversold. The daily is not oversold. The 12 hour is not oversold. So that is my constant reminder. We can absolutely see another leg down. And again, it's just, it's juggling all of these most likely scenarios. So I'm scouting the weekly high or low, but we're in an hourly downtrend. We're not oversold on any time frames. Can't even think about a weekly high or low being set unless we get over the highs of today. That is where we stand. We'll see what tomorrow brings. Two more trading days in the week. Friday is closed. Do good things.